Hi, so this is definitely the first time that you probably heard my voice on one of my videos. Uh, and this is kind of like a test run. So I just wanted to uh, try this out uh, with this quick time-lapse video of my manga Cat in the Hat Girl. Uh, of course, inspired by Dr. Seuss and Dr. Seuss Week, since uh, I am an art teacher at a uh, school and uh, all the kids were preparing for Dr. Seuss Week, so I felt kind of inspired, so I did this on the side. Um, this is just basically to show you some of the steps that I take to, to do my digital painting. And, and of course, like all artwork on all artists' um, styles and techniques, they evolve over time, so this is just the style that I'm using at the moment. And yes, I'm very, very fond of the manga and anime style that uh, that's kind of run rampant all over the world right now, especially with a lot of artists and online artists. I'm using here Clip Studio Paint. I really like the way the brushes work more so than Photoshop. Though from time to time, I'll go back to Photoshop. Not in this video series, but um, I usually go back to Photoshop because um, I'm a trained graphic designer and. Um, and digital artists and I've used Photoshop for a lot of different things especially in my graphic design work and packaging and design and, and poster and magazine ads uh, and other things similar to that. I also use Adobe Illustrator for vector drawings but I really like the way Clip Studio Paint um, brush engine works. It's very very intuitive uh, especially after you've used other programs. I like to separate my, my layers into named layers if uh, sometimes you'll notice that I actually stop and change them or, and name them or put them in folders to try to keep it organized. Not so much for myself, my own sake, but in case uh, which you, when you learn working in, uh, especially in a design facility or studio, that you have to share files, so you have to make it as easy as possible for other artists to understand what's going on. And it's it's more in for graphic design and for illustration, but you know a little organization really really helps. So as you can see, the first few layers that I've been drawing were the quick sketches, and I like to use my transform tool to end up laying everything out. So I'll have one gestural sketch and then another semi-gestural sketch on top of it to try to get re more refined line work. And all and um, the ratio of my, my background of my uh, page is 16 inches by 9 inches which is just a standard ratio size for uh, a widescreen computer screen or monitor, especially nowadays. It makes things easier to lay things out and you can always, when you're working digitally, make, a, make the file as large as you can in terms of resolution. This is 300 pixels per inch. Um, most artists would like to run at maybe like 300 to 600 pixels per inch, but my computer isn't that high end so 300 pixels per inch might be just already but going past that might be really pushing it and it, it's still really good for for print work if you look at the difference of the cat in the hat girl versus thing one and thing two thing one and thing two are a lot looser a lot more uh energized um and less detailed they're more i guess you can say they're a little bit more fun and unrefined. Here I am changing my canvas size and uh, changing the layout so that I can blow up the image. Seeing that if you can see right now that this is still the rough sketch, I'm going to end up blowing it up bigger and then on top of that I'll start refining it. I'm definitely struggling here with the hand for the cat and the hat girl. A lot of artists still struggle with, like myself, hands and feet. And we have to use a lot of reference material. And sometimes, like for myself, I ended up later using my own hand and taking a picture, a selfie of myself with my phone, and then using that to help me sketch it out a little bit more. You're starting to see a lot of the colors or paints swatches around the drawing because I'm starting to explore what colors I'm going to be using for my, my palette. It's always good to start establishing a palette beforehand. I know that a lot of us sometimes like to just draw and paint by the seat of our pants and I've done that many many times but I've noticed that by actually thinking about the color choices it makes the overall painting look better and more unified. Here I'm using for my line work uh, more like a burnt color like a brown reddish brown and I'll later on change this uh, line work into a multiply layer so it's it, gets the colors underneath it a little bit darker. 
Sometimes almost black without being absolutely black. Never be afraid of erasing and starting over. I always tell that to my students. I always have to tell that to myself. Even though you might make a mistake at first and you've been working on something for too long, starting over sometimes will make it go faster than trying to refine something that's already wrong. But I was pretty happy with most of this layout. So, uh, And you can see here there's more paint swatches around uh, thing one and thing two of the color choices I'm going to be using for them. By drawing the characters on different layers, it helps me later on in case I want to change the layout again. Um, when I originally created the sketch of, of the cat in the hat girl, I was going to have the thing one and thing two lower, almost right behind her skirt. And I was even going to have cat in the hat girl looking in the opposite direction, but I flipped, I mirrored the canvas and I liked this variation better. Uh, a lot of artists you're going to see on, online, especially conceptual tech uh, design artists, they like, or even illustrators, they like to flip, flop their, their their image so they can get an idea of what might be going wrong. We we focus so much on the details of one particular view of a drawing that we don't notice our mistakes until we flip it, until we mirror it. I just created here a clipping pad or a clipping mask. Uh, it's just a layer with a solid paint color, and I create one for each of the characters, you know, on different layers. I believe I did the thing one and thing two on the same layer, probably, where the Banga girl has a has her own layer, and I also start picking out the color that I'm going to be using for the darkest shade or the shadow color, and I like to use blues and purples, slightly desaturated. Here I'm picking out on a, on my own on a different layer. Not really picking up, but I'm trying to understand where my light's going to be coming from. And so what I'll do is I'll paint in accordance to where those uh, lights are going to end up hitting the, the character. You'll notice that my saturation of my colors are brighter where the light should be hitting the character. And you start getting more uh, desaturated and subdued and hit more towards that shadow purple color. I just found that this is probably what works the most for me at the moment. I know other artists, and you'll notice other artists will do it a little bit differently. They might be using the shadow and then they'll paint uh, really uh, on separate layers each, each color and then they'll start adding a different layer for shadows and a different layer for light intensity. I just think this for me works most more like watercolors. I, I've been, uh, I really love watercolors, traditional watercolors. I also like Prismacolor markers, uh, Copic markers, and uh, gouache. And this kind of works the same way for me in terms of uh, painting. Sometimes uh, a lot of artists will, including myself, uh, will, you, will adapt something traditionally and then we'll try to, or we'll use a traditional method in our digital practice. Some artists that I've seen online have done everything from uh, learning to, from the point that they started learning, all doing it traditionally. I mean, all doing it di digitally instead of doing anything traditionally. So their mindset might be a little bit different. I'm still kind of old school in that sense. But I've been working uh, with my drawing tablet, uh, my drawing graphic tablet on my computers since, I want to say since about 1998. So I've been, uh, been doing digital work for a while and I still like painting traditionally and doing everything on paper but I find uh, that uh, it slows me down and sometimes I just want I'm just itching to get something out and paint it and cover it and done and especially when you're trying to work in the professional uh, graphic design world you need to find shortcuts you need to find ways to get things quickly done you can't just stay on one one particular subject or experiment on just one type of painting for for a long time. You need to get the product out. So I created separate layers for each of these colors, the reds, the whites, the greens for the hair, 
and then name them try to name them accordingly and then you can see on the side of the the layer that there's like a red band on it that's just to show you that it's using the the very bottom clipping path to keep all the colors confined within that area and it's nice because sometimes I, I, I realize as I'm painting that I made a mistake with the clipping path and I'm missing certain spots or things that need to be uh, erased. So I'll go back and erase the clipping path as I'm doing right here. And it doesn't do anything else to the paint on top of the surf on top of the, the other layers on top of the clipping path. So it helps a lot. When you look at that bow, when you look at her outfit, you notice that I went, um, that I highlighted some areas even more so, with more saturation. It's really, really nice to go back on top of the colors and add um, an even more saturated or even a brighter or even a different color on top uh, to make it look like light's actually hit, hitting it. Here I am at matting the rim light. Once I learned about rim light, um, it made my, my drawings pop out a lot better, a lot more. And I suggest that any artist, digital or traditional, look up um, how to take a photo, a professional photo, and you'll understand about three-point lighting. Once you know how to, all about three-point lighting, you'll be able to make your photographs look out a lot better, and especially your drawings. So definitely, definitely look into that. Sometimes I added uh, the additional lighting on top, but I felt that with uh, the way I painted this, I didn't, I didn't feel like it was going to add anything to the drawing. It was probably going to take away. So I took that out and just used the colors to uh, demonstrate where the lighting is hitting the actual figure. Sometimes I add a different layer that's going to be for the very intense shadows, the darkest shadows. Um, but I didn't do it for this case uh, because um, in the past I, I've tried doing it both methods and I'm noticing that this particular method seems to be doing okay by itself. It's strong enough. It's um, you get the, the, the I get the look that I'm, I'm looking for, and uh, it's, you can read what's what's on the on the canvas. It's legible, in other words, to the to the eye. So here are the characters. I'm probably going to be playing around a little bit with uh, moving them around to see if I can get them to, to look a little bit different or to add balance to the picture. But I, th I think I'm pretty pretty set on where I have them here. Sometimes the hard part is actually uh, after painting all of this is trying to figure out what I'm going to do for the background. And uh, I know some artists will will paint a, a pattern background and. I'm still not that comfortable with it yet, so I was thinking, yeah, maybe I should add some white to it to the background, make it look like a light novel cover. Like most, you'll see a lot of light cover novels, especially like at the bookstore. They're all solid white except for the character picture on top of it. Uh, but uh, I decided to just go with other colors to see uh, what makes the figure stand out more. And I used the gradient maps just to play with the color choices. Um, I've also used uh, hue variations, as you'll see here. Can't forget my signature down here. Look at the picture from far away, or shrinking it down, so it's to see how, how it reads. Make sure the background contrasts with what's on the foreground, and that you don't lose sight of the silhouettes of the figures. So that pretty much ties up this uh, quick time lapse video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thank you very much for coming over. Uh, visit my art station site. Uh, send me an email if you have any questions or are interested in any uh, commission work. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and share. Appreciate it. Have a good one.